G'day guys, another dive into the parasite world and about ancestral living. So let me just share this sort of first um, uh, article. So this was in the um, Science Daily and it says, why some people, why some parasitic worms persist in people? And this was out of the University of Nebraska and um, Lincoln. A new study may explain why some people struggle to expel parasitic worms that infect their intestine. The research suggests that the phenomenon is primarily a numbers game. Uh, large numbers of worms can overwhelm the immune system and kickstart a self-perpetuating cycle and nearly guarantee their survival, uh, where small groups and lone worms cannot. As hosting gig goes, it's a crowd, it's a tough crowd. Anyway. Yes, I, I could come up with a better sort of uh, um, little title for my full story part. But anyway, um, yeah, some people are a bit eccentric. Anyway, the number more than a, million, than a billion people are hosts to parasitic worms and take up residence in their intestine. For most, it's a short stay with the immune system evicting the worms in days or weeks and leaving no trace that the parasites were ever there. Okay, so the majority of people, their immune system is able to cope with small amounts in that initial stage and rid the body completely of these things. In a small number percent, percentages of people and other animals through, the worms gain a permanent mouth hold, or I think they mean foothold, and can stick around the intestine for years. That persistence often leads to malnutrition, which is what she was suffering, that lady that was speaking to Bart, which in turn um, uh, tightens the grip of infection, in initiating a spiral and becomes difficult to escape. Sort of like a feed, a feed, a nasty feedback loop. The question is why that small percentage of struggle to expel parasites um, was has stymied researchers for a while. They basically got no idea <laughs> how effectively. I mean, up until now, they've been using their little potions and drugs from big pharma and antibiotics. None of that's been working. That's just basically deranges the gut microbiome even further and sometimes can unleash even worse outcomes in the long run doesn't work because um, it usually takes out more of the good guys than the bad guys <laughs> so yeah they got no idea what they're doing in that regard the question um, uh, then is the question is why the small percentage struggle to expel parasites um, as, yep that's right but the new mathematical model developed by the University of Nebraska Lincoln and Royal University Institute for C research offers an answer while reinforcing an adapt, ad, 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 adage safety in numbers. Basically, what the without going through because it's a very, very long, as you can see, I'm not going to read all this, I'm not even interested. It's a model, they don't really come up with any, any real solutions. It's just basically they've identified ways to basically identify which people are more likely to have persistent infections and which aren't. Whoopee. Um, but the, the reality is you, you can see there that they've identified at least one causal, you know, a weak immune system to get rid of, you know, you know, because that's, you know, they've already, you know, that usually the immune system evicts, gets rid of these things. That's what it's supposed to do. The immune system is supposed to do that. If it's not doing it, what's wrong with the immune system, I would ask. I wouldn't be asking, oh, what are the numbers coming in? I'd be asking, because really the numbers are going to always be small initially. If the, if the immune system is strong, it'll expel them. If, the, if they get it larger in numbers and actually take hold and suppress the immune system and all that, well, remember what she said about macrophage being suppressed? Yes, that does happen. In that regard, let's look at some solutions, ancestral solutions. Okay, vitamin D increases killing of intracellular um, Lismania amazonesis. 
another tongue twister, in vitro, independently of macrophage oxidative mechanisms. So, you know, macrophage part of the immune system that just basically hits it with cytokines to basically oxidatively, you know, destroy the, the little parasite that's in your body. And that one, that Lismania, is basically one of these, uh, these parasites, is these little worms. You can actually see them. They do, you do get them from uh, these um, uh, flies, these sand flies. They, these little, they're quite worldwide, you know, um, in many parts of the world, especially in poorer countries. They're quite pronounced in that regard. Um, so what we're looking at, the most important part here without reading the whole lot, in this study, because I've got a lot to cover, in this study, we demonstrated the vitamin D directly directly, did you hear that, reduces parasite growth in infected macrophage. So if the macrophage gets infected and so inhibited from doing its job, again, the virus, these parasites are infecting or undermining the ability for the immune system to, to do the function, you know, because they're overwhelming the immune system. Well, vitamin D levels help directly reduce that parasite growth inside the macrophage by 50 to 60%. That means it actually gives the macrophage an ability to come back and hit. T cells are also played important um, in this game. Anyway, let's move on. The role of vitamin D receptor in immunity of is many a major infection. Yes, yes. Anyway, again, these studies indicate that vitamin D deficiency, either through the ablation of vitamin D receptor or elimination of its ligands, 125D, leads to an increased resistance of this infection, but not only in the host that is predisposed, but, but only in the host that is predisposed to TLTH1 immune response. So some people are more susceptible than others in that regard. So I'm not going to go into the genetics um, of that. People can read this for themselves. But the reality is that, again, you know, silencing genes, we know we have to get our levels in order to silence certain genes, which people may be susceptible. That's a possibility. Um, so if you want to, how do we do it? we need to get our levels to 80 nanograms per milliliter or 200 nano millimoles per liter. That is the therapeutic level where all 1,200 plus um, genes can be influenced. Very important if you've got these sort of genetic predispositions to make you more vulnerable. You have to get up to thera therapeutic levels you need a good animal-based diet to provide, to furnish enough cholesterol to be able to do that job because cholesterol is important for the immune system and the fighting capacity of the immune system. So we need to get it up to those magic levels. Anyway, let's move on. We've got much to care. Anti-malaria activity of vitamin D. Yes, well known that basically vitamin D suppresses PCAS parasite growth in the acute phase. That means in the worst phase, which is what you want. You want it to, to suppress it and bring it under control. You know? So again, very important. Let's move on. Taurine, drinking attenuates, reduces. That means the burden of intestinal um, adult worms and muscle larvae. It's even the larvae in the mice with Trichinella um, spiralis infection. So not only the worms, but also the larvae, another problem, you know, because if you've got larvae in there, they come back. So we, we need to suppress these. So you're suppressing through vitamin D, which is supporting the immune system, and you're suppressing these with taurine. And if you've got a stronger immune system, you'll be able to clear out that as those people in that study, um, the Nebraska University had noticed that if you've got a good immune system, and if you, if you clear them out quickly when they're in small numbers, now obviously you have to get the therapeutic level to be able to deal with 
something that's entrenched in your system. You don't want to get there. You want to maintain good levels of animal nutrition and good levels of vitamin D. And then practically you'll have the capacity to expel these things and deal with um, these sort of uh, invaders um, yes, from the, from the um, deep lagoon. Anybody seen that movie? Anyway, let's move on. So this is what this little bugger is. Trigonella, human pinworm, the roundworm, Trigonella um, brittolvi. So these ones, basically, all these lovely little things that taurine did, tends to suppress is basically you find them in rodents, pigs, bears, hyenas, and humans. Yes, yes. It is sometimes referred as the pork worm, but it's not only in pork, you know, but it is something that could actually be, um, so cook your, yeah, cook your worm. <laughs> cook your basically pork, <laughs> just in case. Uh, anyway, God almighty. Thus, taurine can ameliorate. Remember what we said, it can reduce the pathological processes of trichinellosis. So this is important that taurine can, you know, have an effect on reducing the, the pathological processes. If you, can, if you can force them down the numbers, then the immune system can clear them. Got it? Thus, taurine can ameliorate that, um, yep, and may be a great value for the treatment and prevention of infections from T, spirulus, and other, and other gastrointestinal nematodes. And we know what they are, the roundworms and all their relatives, little microscopic unsegmented um, roundworms. So there you go. Taurine, animal foods, the heroes again. Ah, yes. Yes. Anyway, bile salts, the role of bile salts in the biology of tapeworms. Yes. In the previous paper, so it's good to actually go back to these older studies. So this just uh, um, was in this old publication, which is the Journal of Parasitology. Remember, I was talking about it before. And, um, oh no, that was the other one, the parasitology one. This is the journal, which is the American one. Um, and this was in August, 1959. This is in part of that magazine, that section. And it goes, I'm not reading the whole of guys this because we're moving on. Um, the role of bile salts in the biology of tapeworm, further observations on the effects of bile salts on metabolism. In a previous paper, Rothman, 1958, it was shown that bile salt inhibition of the metabolism of dimuta and Ocharistica symmetrica, which is symmetrical in Greek. With this finding on the basis of further experiments, we, we performed with other species of tapeworms to determine how this mechanism is affected. So they did a bit further um, to look at the, and that's their method. And, and basically they found that it does help in reducing. It doesn't surprise me because we know that this through, that these can actually move up into the small, from the, from the bowel, from the colon, they can move up into basically, because um, they do come through your mouth, you know, and they basically come through that, so before they even, if, they, if they're actually stopped at the stomach level with very low acidity, they're not going to get any further. You've eliminated the problem. Now, if they get through past this, um, because you may have H. pylori or candida or something that actually is not acidifying enough, please view my, I'll put up there, the video on um, how to get the stomach going and correctly and all that taurine dependent and uh, sodium dependent in that regard or um, the chloride part of the salt um, and uh, and pretty much if they get into the small intestine which they can come off their pancreatic bile ducts and stuff like that and you know infect the they can really cause all sorts of problems by infecting other things 
they get into the small intestine. You need bile salts to basically cleanse, cleanse the actual small intestine and really deal with them. You know, it usually kills off those parasites that basically do come up from the, either come through the, the mouth or come up from the colon. They basically, it cleanses the bile salts. And the, the best bile salts that persist around, as we know from that other video that I made, it's basically the ones that come from taurine. Remember that. Anyway, and they are the ones that are the most effective in antiparasitic, that mother's milk has high taurine, which I've discussed in the previous video, and I'll put that there in the bottom part. So these are important take-home messages in that regard. So people can just go through it and actually check it out themselves. It's a, and I'll study. I may have to, because it's not available online, um, you know, and basically, so it's an inhibition of, uh, it has been shown that the bile salt inhibition, of, oops, no, no, that's not the part. Yep, anyway, people can basically read the part. I can't remember now where it was. But basically, these are basically dealing with reducing the effects um, of the, these organisms to, to basically operate and metabolize things and do things in the body. So you really want to bring, reduce their numbers, bring them under control, and then allow the immune system to clear them out of the system is really what you want. So these are those two that I've actually covered. Um, so there's one, so it's all these little buggers. Um, and they usually infect mammals, you know? So they, they, you know, it's a tapeworm, it's a rat tapeworm, but it does infect other mammals from rodents um, in that regard, that one. And this one, I think that one looks a bit like the head on that one, that, that lady, that large one that she had in the, in the bath. Um, tub that she was looking at looks a bit like it, but it's the other one that's it. Um, Orchestric or symmetrica. God. Yes, another tongue twister. Yes, what can one say? Now, another thing that we have to remember because everybody gets really wound up about parasites and stuff like that is that they do can have beneficial effects. Parasitic worms, unsung heroes in the fight against inflammatory bowel disease. It's been well known that, you know, these sort of little buggers um, can have an effect on the modulation. As long, not all of them, some of them can actually have benefits in the system and usually the body doesn't completely get rid of them if they start modulating the immune system. So you want to basically keep things under control. You don't want them to take hold, but you'd, um, but some of them can in some people have actually used them, um, uh, certain types of worms in people with um, a number of health issues, allergies in particular. They seem to actually help. And even the malaria situation, there are some parasites in West Africa where the people that are infected with these, um, these worms tend to basically not get malaria. So it's quite interesting. So it's a, it's a far more complex story in that regard. Um, let me just leave that. It's a far more complex story. And I think ancestrally living is the most important thing. Do you remember what Mary Ruddock, when she was actually dealing with a Maasai, and she had noticed that kids were coming back from school and those ones had low vitamin D levels and were eating kibble you know, the seed oils. And remember that she showed those picture, pictures of the seed oils and the, the flour and all that. So these kids had already a low taurine, low vitamin D diet for a number of months, coming back to the tribal areas, and they were struggling to fight pathogens in the environment. With the other kids in there, not a problem. The other kids and, and adults were able to get rid of the, any parasites that they may have come but, um, pa um, you know, parasite infections were quite widespread amongst the kids that had gone to school. Surprise, surprise. A species in appropriate diet makes you more susceptible. I think that lady could do, um, uh, you know, going back to a more ancestral way of eating, 
plus adding vitamin D. And I would, I would actually mega dose in terms of, as long as you're not on high blood pressure, you know, I've done a video on that, um, a recent video, I'll stick it in the other direction up all that way. Um, so that will cover that and, you know, what to, you know, certain medications and stuff like that, that could be an issue with taurine. So you need to adjust things with a, with a, um, with basically a health, uh, uh, a physician. So, um, and as I said, um, the, those sort of dosages are not medical advice. It's just basically my opinion that I believe that if you maximize your levels of vitamin D, you maximize your levels of um, taurine and you get the um, gallbladder bile flow. Even she understood that. She understood that basically bile, bile acids, and a good stomach acidity seems to eliminate a lot of the a lot of these um, little nasties. And that's what you really need to get. You need to suppress them and reduce their load in order for then the immune system to be strong enough to clear them out. That's really the strategy if, you, if you've got these infections. Um, and that's what help, works within the, we see within amongst um, tribal people. Um, and so it's really important that people understand that. People have been, humanity has been infected with uh, these parasites for a very long time. It's not new. I think really compromised immune systems and the more kibble the culture is becoming, the more susceptible people are to these infections. And if you take a look in India, there is more parasites in people in Southern India, India who are on a vegetarian diet than those who are more animal-based diet in the North. Even though those people in the North have lower, lower um, sun exposure um, all year round compared to the South. So that shows you the superiority of an animal-based diet just there on that basis. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Um, please um, uh, like and uh, share it around amongst your friends and family. See you.